Okay, so probability then with the and or or rule, uh, intermediate tier, C grade GCSE. Now I've put a couple of videos up already regarding probability, got basic probability and tree diagrams. Today we'll look at, this is in between. Okay, so and and or rule. So Jane goes shopping and the probability she buys a CD is 0.4. The probability she buys a magazine is 0.6. And these events are independent. They are completely separate. What's the probability that she buys a CD and a magazine? Right, the key word there, the last sentence is and. That's going to give us an insight, give us a clue of which the operations we're going to be using. So, probability of buying a CD, 0 0.4. Probability of buying a magazine, 0 0.6. Completely separate events. Probability should buy a CD and a magazine, we have to multiply them together. Now, 4 times 6 is 24. Two decimal places, sorry, one decimal place, one decimal place, add them together, two decimal places in our answer. Okay, so we're using times table knowledge to help us with multiplying decimals. Some people think this is 2.4, it's not because be careful with the amount of decimal places in the question, and the sum of those decimal places will be the total amount of decimal places in the answer. So we have to multiply them. We do not add, okay, because that would give us an answer of 1.0. If the probability of here buying a CD is 0 0.4, there's no way the probability of here buying a CD and a magazine to be certain. Okay, the probability that she buys both and must multiply them is 0 0.24. So with an and, we have to multiply. Okay, so second question. In a football match, the probability that Michael scores is 0 0.4. And the probability that James scores is 0 0.2. These events are independent. Again, they're separate. What's the probability that Michael and James will score the football match? So... Probability of Michael scoring is 0 0.4. Probability of James scoring is 0 0.2. For the word and, we must then multiply to give us an answer of 0 0.08. Again, 4 times 2 is 8. One decimal place, two decimal places as our total. 1 and 1 is obviously 2. So and is multiply. We then got a jar of marbles, okay, the standard probability sort of style questions. And now this is a good way to show um, what we do when there's a, an all sort of question. So the probability of selecting, uh, say, blue or green. Okay, so the blue ones there, I've got three, okay. 3 out of, let's have a look, 20. 3 out of 20. Let's check that. 5, 10, 15, 20. Yeah. So blue is 3 out of 20. Green then, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I've got 10 out of 20. So if you can imagine that, you're blindfolded. There are three blue in there. You're selecting them. It could either be blue or green. But if I've got three blue, and 10 green, that means I have 13 of them, which are either blue or green. So to get 13, we have to add these together. Remember when you're adding fractions, the bottom number, the denominator, always stays the same. So when it was or, we had to add the fractions. So then let's find the probability now of selecting red or blue. Well, red, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 out of 20. Blue, we worked out to be 3 out of 20. So the probability of selecting red or blue would be 10 out of 20. So then, 
follow that pattern, the probability of selecting either blue, red, or green, well, they're all the colours we've got there. There are no other possible events that could be happening here. So we know what it should equal, but let's just prove it to make sure it does. So probability of a blue was three out of 20. Probability of a red one was seven out of 20. Probability of green was 10 out of 20. Add them all up. We have 20 out of 20, which equals one. Remember, one is certain. So it's certain that we're going to select either blue, red or green because obviously there are no other colours. It is certain to select any of those three. So that just shows why we have to add the fractions. So we had add was when it says the word or and then multiply when I said the word and. So I was shown this a couple of years ago which has stuck with me ever since. And I've made these two letters extra big just to stand out that little bit more. Right, so if it says or, you have to plus the fractions. Okay, P for plus, or. If it says with and, you have to multiply. So poor Mandy, Whenever you see probability, you know it's going to be fractions, you could even be decimals. You have to use that to help you realise if it's an or question, it must plus, and if it's a multiply question, then it must say the word and. So, bear that in mind when it comes to probability. A bit more... Like a little bit harder now as a question, okay? More GCSE style. A bag contains three yellow and four blue sweets. A sweet is taken out at random, it is replaced, and another is taken out. Find the probability that at least one sweet is blue. Right, so we've, we've got some different possibilities here. We could have it's got to be at least one blue, and we could have a probability of a yellow. Uh, so I have a yellow and blue. We could have blue and yellow. Or we could have blue and blue. So now listed all of my possibilities that would satisfy the question of at least one sweet is blue. The only other variation I could have here would be yellow and yellow, which doesn't work because it's got to be at least one blue. So look at the fractions then. Yellow, I've got three yellow out of seven altogether. So probability of yellow and blue. Four out of seven. It is replaced. That's why there's always seven in there. Three times four is twelve. Seven seven to forty-nine. Probability of a blue and yellow. Well, blue is four out of seven. Uh, sweet is replaced. And then to select a yellow one would be three out of seven. Same number, so we've got twelve out of forty-nine. Probability of a blue and a blue. Well, blue is four sevens. And set another blue would be four sevens. Four times four is 16, seven sevens of 49. However, I haven't answered the question fully yet. I've worked out all my different variations, all my different possible outcomes. However, the probability that at least one is blue would be this one and that one. And that one. We have to add these all together. So the probability that's at least, so at least 
one is blue with B to add these together. So I've got 12 over 49, add 12 over 49, add 16 over 49. 12 and 12 24, add the 16, it's 40. 40 over 49, that's nearly certain, which we know is right because the only other outcome it could be would be yellow and yellow. Three out of seven, three out of seven again, would be nine out of 49, and that's the bit that's missing off. So probability of this one is blue, list the different possible outcomes, work them out as fractions, add them together to give your final answer to the examiner. Biggest tip though, poor Mandy. It says or, plus, and multiply. Be careful, um, especially with each one of them. If the answer looks wrong, probably is, maybe try the other one. Look at the rules, write some steps down, and have a really good go at some of these questions. Best of luck.